so I, I want to welcome everybody this evening. Um, and uh, Todd's, Todd's going to walk us through the homework, not, not Chris's homework, but the reading assignment. All right. Our uh, assignment this evening was for uh, chapter three, 125 through 139. And actually, I, I think this portion of the chapter applies very well to tonight's subject, uh, member and community involvement and activities. Um, there was one quote that stand, stood out for me, and then I'll ask others um, for their reflections on the chapter. We see what others cannot perceive. We paint a picture of what they cannot envision, like the brush strokes on canvas or the innocence of a child's drawing on pavement. These images and messages raise hope, instill confidence, and embolden our aspirations. Uh, I think the Grange as a whole can do that for its community. And you know, how we project our image to that community will determine how successful we'll be in that community. Um, that's my take on that. Um, does anyone else have comments or reflections on the chapter? I have two. Oh, Sorry about that. Um, so the first one is on page 131. Always and everywhere, people are in search of hope, help, and heroes. We must each, each raise up and bring them ashore. That was my second quote that I did not use. And my second one is on page 129. It's true that leaders are in the what, how, and when business, but ultimately we must, we all must be in the opportunity business because exceeding potential is not just about each of us, it's about all of us. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I, I thought that the um, quote about inspire to aspire was good and it actually tied into Chris's homework when you saw that picture. And uh, um, because it's really how we look at things and our perspective at how we look at things. And I won't get into Chris's homework yet, but I just really love that picture of what appears to be the abandoned grain hall. Harry? On page 133, I like the first paragraph quote that says, the accountability we wish to see in each other starts with each of us. In other words, we must first be accountable to ourselves for our own behaviors. Believe it, say it, mean it, and act it. And that's almost the, the underscore of all marketing. Yes. Karen. Karen? Uh, thank you. On page 126, the best stories unify us through common experiences, while also celebrating the differences that broaden our thinking. So I like that for the theme of connecting with our larger community. Well, and that kind of sums up the Grange also, Karen. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the Grange, right? Yeah. I like that same quote for some of the same reasons, but also in that when you listen to somebody, you get a sense of our common shared humanity. Uh, however, it also brings out our differences and you can learn from listening to how other people might look at the same situation differently from you. You wanna talk? Anyone else? else? Marsha. Marsha. Oh, Marsha. I like the quote on page 134, we're only as good as our last promise kept. I think that sums up the Grange in the whole. The first sentence of that page, we must believe. I think that's an important point. No. Yes, the, no. The, um, the one above is... For others to trust us, we must say what we mean and do what we say. There can be no daylight between the two. And that is the truth throughout everything we do. 
I was looking at that one as well. But I also like uh, leadership is inspiring others to believe and enabling that belief to become a reality as well. I, I like both of those. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right. Well, then we'll get right into it. Well, so before good. before we get there, we'll just tell you that your homework for the next portion of the book will be chapter four, Courage, pages 140 through 163. Okay. And now, Jody. So this evening, we have the great honor to have uh, Chris Hamp, who is the vice president of the National Grange with us. And Chris is far more than the vice president of the National Grange. She and her husband, Dwayne, who uh, you all met, if you didn't know them, on our first one, have become really, really good friends uh, to Jody Ann and I. And uh, uh, Chris always has a, a, a really poignant and inspiring message whenever she, whenever I've heard her speak to a group, so she probably shouldn't let us down. That wasn't a, that wasn't a statement as much as it was a statement, Chris. <laughs> so. Got it. Okay, Got it. It, take it, it how we deliver it. Chris. It's all yours, my friend. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, um, it, this is I'm I'm thrilled to be here. This uh, academy is something <laughs> that I'm super interested to see how it goes. It's something that. We've been noodling on how to do this on a national level for a while, and and um, we'll look forward to maybe being able to um, use what you folks learn and and how that works to to expand it into a into a bigger audience, a bigger market. So before we get started, I do want to say I am in the car in a community center parking lot in Ooh. Grand Marais. Michigan up on Lake Superior, um, holding on to Wi-Fi. I've got Dwayne reaching out the car window with one <laughs> hand on his head and the other on a on a um, to try to to try to keep this connection going. So hopefully we don't lose you. If we do, we will be back absolutely as soon as as we can get back on. So you know, with your homework, the thing that comes to mind immediately is you all read the same, and this was your, out of the book, not the homework that I gave you, but the homework out of the book, everybody read the same chapter, and most of you had different quotes that resonated with you for one reason or another, and I think that is a key thing to keep in mind as we work with our members and we work with our communities is we all are looking at the same thing, but we're seeing it through a different lens. The lens may be our experiences. The lens may be the amount of time we've spent in your community. The lens may be the number of years of experience, you know, that we have on, on this earth. And so there's all these different reasons that we may look at things differently. And so I just that, that came to mind as you were all speaking and, and talking about the quote that that you identified as being important for your homework assignment. And I thought that that was a, a good connection and a good thing to, to keep in mind. So I sent you a photo. Um, Dave is correct. That photo is of a standing building in the tiny little town of Benj. B-E-N-G-E -E in the state of Washington. There's not much left in Benj and that Grange Hall. Um, we literally took the sign off of it. And when we did that, you can see what it left behind, right? And this, this photo does, I mean, it touches me in, in several different ways, but I wanted to I wanted to see what you folks thought. So I'm interested to see what captions um, you might have come up for it and what emotions it brings it brings to the forefront as as you look at look at that photo. Your turn. 
Old buildings can be timeless treasures. Okay. I did along the same line. I called it forgotten memories. When I first looked at it, I said, what a dump. <laughs> and Chris, this is Dave. I thought of opportunities for rejuvenation since this was rejuvenation time and revi revitalization. And it just reminds me, and my colleagues on this call heard me say this before, but for 30 plus years, Riverton Grange was told they couldn't put in a handicap ramp. Riverton Grange was told they couldn't put on a new front porch. In the last three years, we've done both because they cannot tell you you can't do these things. And so we've learned at our Grange Hall. And what I really liked about this picture, besides where the sign was, if you look at one window's boarded up and the other one, you can see a peak either in or out. And I really like that because there's so much possibility to rejuvenate Granges if we get smart. And I truly believe this Leadership Academy is one way we're doing that here in Connecticut. I was going to say going along with. I was going to say going along with uh, what you just said. Um, my caption was a window of opportunity, because like you said, one window's kind of open a little bit, the other one's closed. But there's there's that window of opportunity where you know something can be done. Karen McDonald, uh, I said, help me come back to life. I had said, it can only get better from here. <laughs> I, I called it the ghost town Grange with the subtitle, <clears throat> don't let this be your Grange. And the emotions it brought were kind of sadness of change and failure for whatever reason, maybe the change. I put in for that it is the results of the National Grange Digest sale of Grange property. You can't get rid of it and you can't cash in on it for the Grange. I look at it, the Grange built a new Grange Hall and they can't get rid of the old one because of the section four of the Digest. Of course, if there's nobody left in Benj, there's nothing left to rejuvenate. What is this town thoroughly abandoned for the most part? Chris? Loser. <laughs> is, is that town a thoroughly abandoned town with virtually nothing left? I think we lost her. Oh, oh well. <clears throat> Depends on what's left, I suppose, as to how much opportunity is there. That open window is the realtor's entrance. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Jody? While, while, while right, Jody? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, a, a, quick, uh, uh, a quick Google on Benj. At the 2000 census, the population was 57 with 33 housing units. Uh, median household income is 37.5. Ooh, talk about the a prosperous place. So, so while we're waiting for Chris to come back, it, it, it's interesting, right? Because our emotions, and, and that's how we see things, uh, make us see things differently. You know, and, and the emotion for me, was in line with what, what Rob Buck said. My heart broke a little to see that, that outline of the Grange emblem. I never noticed the, the, the windows, the condition of the windows, right? I only focused on the loss. I'm, that's where my, my mind went first. Um, so it, it, it's interesting, right? Well, I think it is. And I realize I say right too much. Right. Well, at least you realize it, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You see you're changing already. <laughs> oh. 
that that was one of the things when we clean out these granges that's the last thing we take off is to sign mm -hmm. and every one of them is has a similar similar image to them we all look at it with sadness and a loss yeah especially when you look on the other side of the sign and it's brand new <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I can tell you with being just just leaving Chris and Dwayne, um, we you would be talking to somebody on your cell phone and you'd have three or four bars and the call would drop out and it would take several hours to get a sing, signal back. Oh no. Oh, it, it was, it. I mean, talk about the edge of the earth. You're, you're just shy of looking off of the edge up there. So. I hear a lot about that part of Michigan from my wife, who's from not that part, much further south in Grand Rapids, but she, where she lived was outside of Grand Rapids in the country. And she will look at any place that we consider country here and say, you ain't seen nothing. Oh, no. Compared is, to that up is, there, it is beautiful, but it is it is uh, sparse. Desolate is the word to use. Unspoiled. Uns See now, desolate is a negative word. Yeah, you're right. Unspoiled. That's beautiful. why I changed yeah. my mind. Yeah. That's how I yeah. describe myself. Unspoiled. Oh, I was no, no Sorry, I, I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is interesting to see the juxtaposition of the different parts of this country, though, and how, like you said, what we consider to be country versus what another part of the country is as rural for them are really two different things, which yeah. is why some of the National Grange's initiatives about getting the Internet to different parts of the country are so important, where we might not feel it's as important in Connecticut or in California or somewhere where we're more urban or suburban um or our version of rural um but then when you look at places like northern michigan and their rural is rural it, it's a whole different ball game um when it comes to internet and things and that shows the importance of why uh things like you know that everybody having broadband becomes so important we have all that paperwork from amanda for you rob okay good I made sure to pack that in the truck first so I didn't forget it. Great. <laughs> Not much room left in the truck. She, um, the, Chris just sent the text saying that they are working vigorously to get back on. Somewhere else, tell them to find the police station or fire department. Oh my God. I'm thinking Dwayne's out the window. Those papers are right there. So I'm going to say that I found the um, naming subject matter experts in my community was difficult because I pretty much have uh, like two circles of friends and I only know people through those circles. So it's really hard for me to know what everybody's particular thing is unless I've worked with them on something that we share. And that's like politics and Girl Scouts. I, all of my friends I've made you know, before pre Grange, I should say, and Grange is a new thing this year for me, um, have been friends through politics and Girl Scouts. Yeah, now you're having to open up your into the whole community, though, now trying to build what you're mm -hmm. building down there with Wallingford. Yeah. I mean, you want to learn how to make chocolate chip cookies in the woods with no power? I'm your girl. <laughs> that's the politics side, right? Yes. <laughs> Bribing. Oh, here she is. Yay. Welcome back. Back. Sorry. Right. Wayne slid off the hood of the car, I guess. I, <laughs> yeah. I told you. <laughs> Jamie was joking that he fell out of the car. So. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Did everybody that wanted to get a chance to talk about not only the caption, but also their um, 
emotions that 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 photo may evoke? I didn't share mine, Chris. Okay. Uh, so mine is old roots, new beginnings, new tomorrow. And the emotions I had was sadness, despair, and hopelessness. But uh, you also have new happiness, new life, new hope. Yeah, yeah. You know the, the thing that that hits me with with this photo, but also with every mention that we have of of a Grange Hall that is closing, is going away, is leaving a community, is, you know, that that thought of everything that happened in that hall, right? The the public events, the celebrations, the marriages, the remembrances, the discourse that that went on over generations and decades and decades right that made that community better that made the people that met in that building better that made those connections stronger that's that's the piece it's it, it just feels like a you is um, taken away every time you see a grange Close. And, and I, it's that thought process that hopefully the more we can think of it that way, the more we're going to be willing to work hard to ensure that we figure out a fix, that we figure out how to make that Grange successful, how to make sure that that community has a Grange in it to make that community more successful. That we don't say, oh well, um, you know, we've we've lost them before and we'll we'll lose more again. We don't we we've got to get away from allowing this to be okay. And I think if we get there where we where we tell ourselves and we tell each other it is not okay to continue to lose granges and the halls that they meet in i think will be a stronger organization from from that foundation of that building across the across the country chris based on on what you just said would you agree or or disagree that sometimes though the grange as an organization, not as its its place in the community. Um, Grange as a group of people, I, I, I guess is the right word. Sometimes that has to go away for it to truly be reorganized with new blood because it, it, it nine times out of 10 doesn't work with the old regime, the old mentality, the old, the old history if you will. Right. And, and in, I would agree. And in that case, it's not, it's not the building's fault, right? It's, it's our or fault. The, right. Or the it's, organization. That's why I said the, right. The people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's those folks that, that are, you know, belong in that, in that building. And the other part is, and there's there's good argument for that the hall doesn't define the local grange, right? There's there's a lot of folks that say, you know, I don't know, the hall burns down, that's the end of the grange. I mean, that was our identity, that was that was all we had. And 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 I don't think that's the case either. I think the grange is the people. And there's just, a, there's a lot of places where the two go hand in hand, that <clears throat> the maintenance and the upkeep of the building and, and what that building looks like, especially in today's world, is going to be your asset to, to bring folks into that, into that hall and to, and, and that's where we'll you know, we'll move forward with this short amount of time that we have together <laughs> and, and talking about the the uh, organizations uh, that that we have in our communities and how we can put those to to work for us and with us. 
So if there's nothing else on this, Todd, let's bump it, bump it ahead. There we go. So we talk about involvement and activities and, and a few of the, the things that I, I really wanted to make sure that, that we shared and, and that we had a chance to talk about was preparation. I don't think that you can be a successful Grange if you are setting your schedule by the seat of your pants week, week after week after week or month after month throughout the year. What, what we do and, and what works well for us and, and I think works well in a, for most every situation is to set that schedule ahead of time to do it at the start of your year. When you elect your officers and you have a new slate of officers, you have a new president and lecture and all your committee chairs is sit down with your membership, not just with the officers, but with, with your membership and open up that calendar for the, for the next calendar year or Grange year, however you want to do it and start penciling in ideas for your community involvement and your activities at your Grange. And what this does is it builds excitement, as, as it says there, both internally and externally, but it also gives you the opportunity to, to get everything lined up and in order, to get your ducks in a row to go out and what we'll talk about in a little bit is find those su subject matter experts that can help you to, to make sure that that program or that activity is, is the best that you, can, that you can make it. And then that, that lead time and, and posting that schedule of events, whether you do that on your social media. And I know that, that Terry has you all spun up on on how to do that and and how to market and how to advertise and how to make sure that that your community knows what you're doing and when they're when you're doing it and how they can can help you how they can interact with that with those um, events not everything needs to be done at at the first of your scheduling cycle there are some things that, that you are reactive to. Maybe you're reactive to the family that was involved or in an automobile accident or had a house fire and needs some fundraising done to help them out. Those obviously are, are those sorts of events that you're reactive to, right? They're things that, that happen unexpectedly in your community that you can take a part, of it, uh, take a part in and, and help out um, somebody in need that that is you know part of part of the fabric part of who you are in in your community the other thing that setting the schedule ahead of time does is it allows you to look at that in a in a bigger picture across a bigger window and to make sure that you're not burning your folks out you know we have a grange in our county that does a pancake breakfast every weekend for like five months straight and their folks are just whipped you know and and when you get them on you know halfway through or toward the tail end of of those that schedule you're not seeing them at their best you know, you can tell that they're tired you can tell that they're frustrated a little bit you can tell that they're starting to um, pick at each other in in how they're they're presenting that event to the public and so really keep that in mind is if you've got a hundred people that you're cycling through events then maybe you can do something over and over and over without taking a toll but for most of us we can't even you know fathom that sort of a number and so you want to make sure that that you're cognizant of that time and, and those resources that, that your members and your volunteer helpers, that whether 
whether they're currently members or or not have have to give you. Does that make sense? Is there any questions on anything on that short little slide? If I can just make a quick comment, Chris, I think that Granges always need to keep it realistic that the enthusiasm is great, but at the same point, if you can overreact to the enthusiasm and then, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to take in, you know, 500 new members this year. It's like, you need to be realistic about what you're doing in all aspects of Grange. And then you're not going to be disappointed if you're, if you keep your goals and your uh, achievements, um, like you said, reactive um, versus passive versus, uh, being prepared. If if you take all of that into account and you keep your your end your your final line realistic, then I think it all can happen, and then that will build the proper enthusiasm to go forward. Right. You know, our Grange has decided. Oh, oh no! She froze, hmm. and she's gone. I'd like to ask about, uh, talk about the, the burnout. You know, at some granges or some organizations, they always say, you know, if you keep in debt, then you keep your members active because they always, you have to raise money. You always have to be active and all that stuff. But also it's to keep your people active is to, the person that leads also needs to evaluate or find the leader or make the next leader to take over when when it's time for that person to go or they go or some or changes or something to that effect. And we always tell that we should be training our replacements. And that's what, what sometimes happens when you don't have it is because you haven't found your replacement or trained your replacement to change you to change you and that's where the burnout comes in and then the burnout when people the public see it they just say why should we join this place if we're going to get be shark bait because it, i can understand toward the end you really get nasty and cranky and uh the sharks uh, pick on the new ones or the little ones and then you lose them I, I think if you if you utilize some of the tools that um, Shelley, our our membership director, went through with, you know, getting and obtaining new members, um, you know, and, and the one thing she kept saying is is you know, ask them right. You 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 ask them to join the Grange, and then and then you continue to ask them questions through the process. I, what it goes back to the, I realize I'm talking in circles, but I'm trying to articulate this well, right? It goes back to the, uh, to the there's an old joke about, about a car salesman, right? Where, you know, somebody goes in to buy a car. It goes something to the effect of somebody goes to buy in a car and, uh, you know, he tells them all of these wonderful things about the car and he got them coffee and he got them this and he got them that. And then they had to bring the car back for service and the salesman kind of ignored him and they said to him, Hey, you know, why are you ignoring me? And he says, well, because you're not a customer anymore. <laughs> right. And I, I realized I didn't do it justice, but I, I think we do the same thing. And, and this is a cautionary statement um, to Wallingford and to Reading and, and, and to the, and to Granby, right. Um, Continue to ask your member, your, your members, the, the questions and, and, and what do they want to do uh, after they join? Because we seem to take their efforts and their membership for granted um, because of our lower numbers, I believe. So, but I, I think I think that cycle continues once they're a member. And, and Shelly pointed that out that, that that we should we should continue that cycle of 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 asking our members the questions of, of what do they want, you know? Not assume, you know? I, I mean, we do, at ECOC, we do some events 
on an annual basis because they work. And when it comes to doing new events or anything like that, we ask our membership what they want to do. You know, we go to the school and we ask the school, is there anything the school needs? We work closely with the fire departments in town. Um, you know, and it, it, it works. I mean, we're not, we're not, none of us are the Grange we used to be because we're all getting older. But, uh, you know, but it, but it works. Continue to ask. But we forget to ask our existing members, how, how is the Grange for them today? You know, what do they want to see their, their Grange to be like? You know? Because I'm sure many of them have really interesting things to say. And, and three of them, because I, I can't see everybody, but the last time there was on the screen, there, there was uh, the three of them from Wallingford right there on my front screen. I'm sure they have amazing things to say if they're asked questions. All right, we are we are pretty amazing. If we if I can't say so, if I can say so myself, yeah. No, it's a, it's a good point. We we spend an awful lot of time wanting to help everybody else and and oftentimes we use our members like rented ponies right and we don't think of them as as our customers and and our in our community like like everybody else's but we do need to make sure that that we're making we need to make sure that those those members all of our members have have say in, in what we do and that we make sure that we recognize them for their efforts throughout the year as well. I mean, that's one of our most most fun events is the one where we recognize our members and thank them for their service. And one thing kind of a little bit off the path that we do to make sure that we're, that we're recognizing those members is Grange, you know, Grange does a, a poor job, I think, of recognizing members at the front end of their service years. You don't, you don't get anything until you're at least 25 years in. Well, that's, that's a pretty steep hill to climb right out of the chute before anybody's going to say, good job, right? So, so we do that differently in Connecticut, don't we, Todd? Well, that's good. I mean, our Grange does certificates every five years. And that that way, those new members are being recognized for service long before they have to hit 25 years. Otherwise, you know, they're like, well, I mean, like I said, 25 years is a long time to to be working hard without having something to to show for that. OK, so the next slide that Todd threw up there are we're talking about organizations and, and this is. This was part of the homework. This is one of those things where in, in my world, collaboration is about as an important of a concept and an idea that local granges can, can have. That's what you've got to be super good at is collaborating. And this was to get everybody thinking about those organizations with which you can collaborate with which you can build a relationship in your community that cross-pollinates, right? That you help them out, they help you out, and then all of a sudden your members are taking an interest in their organization and, and some may cross over and join and vice versa. And so this is where I was hoping that you would be easy to make a list of who you currently partner with and then make a list with, you know, who did you used to partner with that maybe for what reason, I don't know, those partnerships have, have stopped. And then what are some new organizations or maybe some organizations that you really hadn't thought about before that are out there with which to partner? Somebody want to start off with and then these, I'm sure, will will spur some thoughts with everybody else of, oh yeah, we've got one of those. We could we could do that as well. 
I, I'm Karen. And uh, I think ours come through with uh, some of our hall rentals. So for instance, we have a lot of garden club rentals uh, for potential members. Uh, second group is um, Boy Scouts who help us with many events. And sometimes their parents might become involved with the Grange. Uh, and the last is the Sons of the American Revolution. Uh, same thing with hall rentals. Uh, people became interested in becoming members just by visiting the hall. So it, Karen, is your hall one that if I rent your hall and I walk into it, I immediately know that it is a Grange Hall? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have a big sign out front. We have a couple of signs on the front. We have a historic marker. Uh, we have membership items on the table as you walk in the front door. I think we cover that pretty well. Good. It's amazing how many Grange Halls do not. So that's... That's why I asked the question. We have several people with their hands up, starting with um, Bill Knight or? It's Ann, Ann Marie. Um, so we partner right now with, uh, with a church because that's where we meet at. And, um, and also we partner with Stonington Grange. So they help us out and we help them out. Um, our past partners was the firehouse um that kind of didn't pan out and um our future is um they started a girls club in our community and we're hoping to partner with them and robin so in the past we've partnered with um a holiday drive and with some of the food banks historically. Um, more recently, we had partnered with Masters Manor, which is a food bank in town, um, the Wallingford Elks, and as well as the library. They kind of helped us when we couldn't meet in the Grange Hall. So they provided us places to meet. Um, and so we were partnering with them. Some of the organizations that I'm hoping to and that we've started to have conversations with about partnering in the future is um, SCOW, which for those that don't know you, that's the Spanish community of Wallingford, uh, the United Way, Daughters of the American Revolution, the Boy Scouts, the Rotary, the Girl Scouts. Um, we actually have a meeting coming up with somebody that wants to do a pollinator pathway through the Girl Scouts. So we, we've got a lot of organizations that we're connecting with and through to both grow our membership and to um, partner with so that we can do more events in town, hopefully in the hall, um, as we're trying to also raise money to renovate it. And Dave? Um, hey, Chris and everybody. Um, my list just, you know, initial draft was 20 different things. And I think it was when I moved back home here when I retired six years ago this week. Um, Phil Prelly said that you can really utilize Grange to partner with the community. But so just to throw some things out, um, we partner with our local town of Bark Hampstead. And um, because we're a small town of about 3,000, they have a very limited staff. So they need people that can do things for them. We partner with our local elementary schools and do the dictionary project. Um, we partner with the American Legion and have um, done for 25 months now a Veteran of the Month salute, as well as twice a year an American flag retirement program. And we're actually starting to recruit some of those veterans into our Grange Hall now. We partner with three different Lions Clubs. We partner with three different churches, the local food bank, the garden club, the local merchants association, which is like a chamber of commerce in a small town. Um, the Sierra Club Waste Not Want Not, which is a food feeding program. We help pick up food and help deliver it for them. Um, our local fair association and the Riverton Fair across the street, as well as we're getting active in the Connecticut Agricultural Fair Association. And then two of our six members of the Bark Hampstead Conservation Commission, John Anstead and Judy Doyle, now belong to Riverton Grange. And one's a long-term member, one a short-term member. 
but it's helped us get really involved in some environmental projects. So I was so pleased when Phil encouraged me to come back to Grange after having moved um, and come home um, to get involved. And really, I think because of these different involvements, it's really helping us expand Riverton Grange to be even more impactful in this part of the state. Great, who, who else? Anybody else have their hand up, Todd? No. I do. Um, so our current list that we partner with is a local school in the town of Sterling, the town of Sterling itself, um, a wonderful group that we've partnered with for the last few years celebrating ag. Uh, we partner with the Veterans Home. We do a lot for them during the holidays and the post offices. They collect a lot of food for our food pantry. Our past one, um, past organizations, we've done the churches, the fire departments, the school again, the town, the FFA, we used to do a lot for the FFA and uh, Relay for Life. And our future ones, I have the churches and fire departments again, scouts, the 4-H, and reach out back out to the town to see if there's any community clubs that need another place. Did anybody mention or does anybody do any partnering with their local library? Is that one that that's something that ranges in Connecticut get involved with is with the library? Uh, Wallingford, we've used our library as a temporary meeting place when our building was uh, closed up for the winter, but um, we have a really, I think we have a unique library and we have a large uh, collaboratory, they call it. It's um, a big workspace area that has uh, the potential for, um, and, and actually operates a lot of craft, uh, craft classes, uh, reading, writing classes, robotics. Uh, they have a long arm quilting machine. They have button makers. It's like a whole bunch of different things that you can do in the library. So they're definitely potential. And we've started to explore that. We're still in New Grange. We just got our charger, charter back a couple of months ago. And we've been trying like crazy to raise money because we're starting from zero. Um, but uh, the library is definitely on our, um, on our radar. We also have a community theater. And we have uh, two nonprofit hospitals in our town uh, uh, that are, in addition to being hospitals, they're, they're more like, uh, we have Masonic Care, which is huge, um, which does everything from uh, physical therapy to elderly housing. And then we have um, another uh, physical therapy recovery type hospital that does a lot of stuff in the community. Chris, in response to your library question, we have um, two little community libraries. It's like you um, borrow books and return books. And so our Grange has collected books to stock those two community libraries. And just one other thing I was just reminded I didn't put on the list. We actually are working with two Eagle Scout candidates who are doing projects for our local Grange Hall. One is doing landscaping at our property with our handicap ramp. And the other one is building a, a box to collect used, torn, and tattered American flags. So it's another great organization that Granges can partner with. No, that's, yeah, and, that, and that's perfect. That ties in with the, the next thought I was going to share was, don't be afraid to approach or to work with organizations where they've got something that you need or want right i mean the library our partnership has just kind of started within the last several months 
And what they're going to help us with is to preserve our records. They're going to help us with um, what those boxes of minute books that are sitting in a grain hall that have no, you know, there's no backup copy anywhere. And, and it, you know, it scares us that our, that our records could be gone in, in a literally a, you know, a poof of smoke in, and the library can help us with that. They can digitize those records. And, and so we're looking at, at some different things that we're helping them with in exchange for some help with the digitization process. The other one is exactly that, Dave. It's the Eagle Scouts that are out there looking for projects. And, and we've scored a new back porch, a flagpole, uh, a mini free library, and, and planter boxes. All four of those things at our grain shawl came from Eagle Scouts that were that were needing a, a project and and really fun to work with. Um, and then we also host most of those. Uh, what's their their event called when they're going to receive the actual award? But but we'll host those for for no charge at our hall when when they've completed that Eagle Scout work. All right, let's talk about. SMEs. I think everybody's got the idea about the organizations and, and you've probably just heard some that you are not currently working with that that you can and 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 then maybe some some new ways to work with them to, to benefit to benefit everybody. And this is this all ties together these everybody has heard of subject matter experts or, or SMEs, right? If if you've done any sort of um, reading in, in that area, you probably have come across that phrase. And the neat part is, is that these folks are, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a huge complicated issue. It, it can be somebody that could come in and do a great, program for for your lectures program it could be somebody that can help you with a with a specific single event but this is these are folks that they can be your members they can be your neighbors they can be folks in in the community whether they're they're educators or they're they've got information on from within your local government, how the local government works, how to get more involved with local government. They can be actual hands-on. Maybe there's an old timer that that has the, the tools to make rope and you could have a program on making rope and, and get folks involved with, with some of those older sorts of tasks that that we used to do all the time that we don't see done anymore and, and to, to share those with with the next generation it, making rope canning uh, all sorts of different things that those skills so that we don't we don't lose them as a as a community but um what did you guys come up with with did it make you think about some folks that that you're not maybe utilizing and and then as a lecturer i mean this is money right here right i mean if you can find if if you're if your grain just come together at the end of or right before your new president and i'm kind of tiptoeing around this because i think you guys have a different year than we do i mean we are electing our officers in late november early december they take over the first of january but that's different in connecticut right yeah, we, we elect in June and install in September. Okay, okay. So so when you're setting that new schedule, whether you're gonna wait for the calendar year or whether you're doing it by the, the term of, of your president, if, if you want, you know, our Grange has one community event and one business meeting every month. Those community events, that's where you want your your SMEs to help. You want to say, hey, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's 
ice cream month is, dairy month is June, let's have something to do with the dairy industry and we can make ice cream. We can make homemade ice cream as part of it. And you can go out and, and find some folks from the dairy industry that might be able to come in and, and help you with a program. And boom, your, your, your June is done, right? You, you don't have to worry about June. Let them, let them run with it. And, and likewise, down, down the schedule. So I guess I am interested to see what, what you've come up with with some subject matter experts and if it got you thinking about some things that maybe you weren't thinking about before. You guys are gonna to have to help me with the raised hands. I don't see everybody on my- It would be Dave Roberts first and then Terry. So Chris, I put number one on the list, Rural Minds as the Connecticut State lecturer, we brought them to do one of our roundups to really help people understand the whole mental health topic in the National Grange Partnership, particularly in rural areas. And we actually started a new Lions Club that is going around to Granges, giving um, Rural Minds presentation material. And we received a grant recently to train two people on question, persuade, and refer. So I think that's one great um, project or S SME right there. Uh, a second is recently we've really started partnering with our historical society and they helped us find a lost piece of property here in Connecticut that should be named after Connecticut State Grange. And we're working on expanding now that partnership with the Historical Society. We partnered recently with a beekeeper organization and um, fascinating topic. And at Granby Grange Hall, we're actually looking at bringing beekeeping onto the property. Um, partnering with our local animal control officer. Um, fascinating stuff that Granby and Barkhamstead, believe it or not, share the same animal control officer. So both Granges, Riverton and Granby have that. And then the final one is we recently won a deaf awareness grant and we're really putting a focus on deaf awareness activities and planning a big statewide event. We hope the end of October, but I think there's a lot that I know when, as the president of my local Grange, I always saw on the agenda, you know, one of the committees is deaf awareness and we always skipped over it until we really, and it was at one of the national um, um, Grange conventions where we learned more about deaf awareness and opportunities that local Granges could do that. So I, I think that's really a good one. And we recently actually partnered and did a walk um, with a different um, 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 hearing awareness group. So I think there's lots of different groups. It was called um, um, uh, um, hearing, Walk for Hearing. And uh, um, so I think there's a lot of different SMEs. And one of the reasons is that my lecture in the two Granges I'm active in, they're always asking like, who can we bring in that something different and would appeal to a newer audience? And I think like, you know, um, Jody earlier mentioned Wallingford Grange and some of the Granges that are really trying to um, get reestablished and bring in members. It's some of these new opportunities for SMEs. Is it my turn? Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Yes. Um, historically in Connecticut, um, in looking back to the Grange heydays in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the, uh, the state Grange would have these contests that they would then send down to the Granges, like one would be a, a, a dairy program where all the Granges had to compete with dairy, dairy dinners and, and how they could, you know, use that in their communities. And, and the state would have these various projects um, that they, uh, would encourage the Granges to uh, be more uh, active and host events around things like the deaf activity stuff. Um, Connecticut was very instrumental in working with the American School for the Deaf for years where, you know, they would give $5,000 at a shop back when $5,000 was a lot of money. Um, 
And there, there's all these different activities and things that the state grains used to then take and, and you know, kind of encourage the granges to, to collaborate around. Um, over the years, that's faded quite a bit, um, where granges are now more, uh, they have to rely on the internally to uh, come up with events and promote them and to do what works within their own communities. And it's not necessarily a statewide project, um, for better or for worse. Um, so I think that's something that as a state that we need to think about is maybe we need to to pick up some of these ideas from the past and kind of piggybacking on what Dave Roberts was saying about the deaf activities and the, the Grange plot and some different things. All of these are historical things that the state Grange has done that have come back around again. So maybe we need to look deeper into that to see what we can use um, and, and, you know, finesse going forward. Um, for my own Grange, Winchester Grange, um, we have a lot of different activity um, partners that we work with, um, where we partner all the time with the fire department, the volunteer fire department, they're attached to our hall, um, and we do a lot of back and forth with them. Um, the Little Red Schoolhouse Association is something we're, we're very um, active with as a, as a group. Um, we do things with the, the local church. Um, with uh, the various uh, food shelters in both Torrington and Winston, our Grange is kind of halfway in between the two towns. So we do things um, with both. Um, in our past, we, we've done, uh, the, the past list is very long. I won't go through it, but um, you know, we've, we've been a very active Grange, um, which has kind of waned in the past few years a little bit. Um, but looking forward, I do think we need to do things more with other granges um, like Riverton and Granby and um, granges that aren't too far away from us that if we partner together, it just makes it stronger with projects. Um, I do think also that we need to look at things like the Garden Club and the DAR and the Lions and the Rotary and the Masons and thing, uh, other organizations that our grange used to be active with that are no longer, uh, we're not doing projects with um, unless there's something specific that comes up that I think we need to partner with those. Um, um, for subject um, matter experts, um, I have a very specific list that I put down um, with names of people and and uh, like Frank Delaney, who's the president of the Friends of Main Street. Perhaps he's somebody that could come in and just speak on what what is the town during doing these days? Because not everybody keeps up with that type of thing. Or somebody like um, the Winston Record Department, they host a trunk or treat. Um, downtown every year. Winchester Center is kind of removed from that. So maybe that's something we need to think about doing up in the center. Um, Winston has a tort law museum um, and it used to be a former bank. Maybe that's something that we can, you know, take a tour of and see what it's all about. Um, there's a lot of historical things within Torrington and Winston that our Grange could very easily uh, partner with and, and do things like trips and mystery rides and all of that type of stuff. Um, but I, I think that our organization has evolved over the years, but I, I do think that we need to take a look at some of the things that have worked in the past and see if we can pull some of those ideas forward and just bring them into the, the, this time that we're in now. So I hear what you're saying, but what both you and Dave are saying, as long as it's relevant, we, we like to hold on to our history so tight that we, we, we become irrelevant. Yeah. Well, that's why it needs to be be brought forward in a manner where it's it's not exactly the same as it was. You're using it as an inspiration moving forward. We're saying the same thing, yes. Basically building on our foundations. Absolutely. I guess I'm so, next. Yes. Go ahead, Anne-Marie. Yeah, so... Um, Actually, I have asked my members what they wanted to see. And I even had a response from the church members that what they wanted to see. So um, the number one thing was they wanted to learn about beekeeping. So I asked a local farmer to come in in September to speak on beekeeping. And so um, I have a whole group of people that's going to come to that. Hopefully I get some members out of it. Um, and then um, I'm hoping, and they wanted to learn how to quilt. So I, I figure I'll get a, a local person to come in and talk about quilting. And, um, and another person wanted to learn how to um, 
how to read notes and play the piano. So I, I'm working on getting someone to do that. So um, I actually asked my members what we should concentrate on doing for a lectures program. Um, so we're going to, in the interest of time, we're going to let Chris continue. Okay, I think, Todd, that's the, the last slide, right? Yes, it is. Okay, you can, um, you can take away that screen share, then I can All see. Right. Sometimes it, it comes in handy, but then the trade-off is I don't get to see all of your faces. And I like to see that we're not making you sleep or, or uh, go away or play with your dog or whatever. But um, Terry, your, your comment about Mr. Delaney um, hit, hit another thing. And, and when, we, when we do these and, and there's a, a time that you know, it's it's an hour. It, it's like, man, those those hours go fast, right? And here we are. We're already done with it. But the point that I wanted to make about Mr. Delaney is this: is that the other piece, and we didn't talk a lot about the member side of of this topic. Is one of the things that we do is is we talk about who we want to be our members, right? And it's it's not just hoping and, and praying that somebody walks in the door and they'll sign the piece of paper. But it's but it's identifying who in your community do you want to be a member of your grange? Who is a good fit? Who has connections or or has those skills, those abilities, that knowledge that you think would be a good fit with your membership, your projects, and how you how you present yourself to the community. So there are those Mr. Delaney's all over the country, right? That are the movers and shakers in your organization. And they're not always long established folks, but they could be the last president of the FFA that just graduated from high school and you know is going to stay in the community at a community college for a couple of years or the local four year that they've decided to, to go to is is fairly local you know go get go get them go ask them to join your grade and tell them why tell them why tell them how they can make an impact and how their leadership can be expanded and, and how they're going to have an opportunity to not only lead but to be well led folks you know that that old phrase about iron sharp sharpens iron right we want we want to surround ourselves with the best when we do that then we we that rubs off on us it makes us sharper so that's the piece that i wanted to drive home here at the end in regard to members is don't just let it all be by chance. Don't let it be just them coming to you, but you 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 turn it around and, and go out to them. Does that make sense? Any any ideas on that? Has anybody played that card and, and done that with any level of success? I like that idea, Chris, because I think that in trying to rejuvenate Oxford Grange some years ago, and, and the process is ongoing, is that we have discovered that you don't wait for people to walk in the door and ask to join. You have to approach people who have skills and who are uh, perhaps active in other organizations in the community and can offer something positive to the Grange to join you and share those skills with you, with us, you know. So I, I really like hearing that from you because it's, it's again, it's like you're sharing a story from your end of the country and I'm here listening to it in my end and it rings true. Yeah. Shared experience. Go, I mean, go get the cream of the crop. Go cherry pick, right? We use that term out here. You cherry pick. You, you look for the 
you know, I just went down a row of raspberries the other day and I was in a hurry and, and I'm just picking the biggest and the brightest ones off as fast as I can. And, and that's, you don't have to go digging around in the, in the bottom of that raspberry cane, looking for every last little, little berry, um, go get the big ones, go get the, the bright red, bright red ones, the ones that are going to help you, help you get to where you want to get to. Interesting that you say that because yesterday I went on a birding expedition and I went off to a corner of the Audubon sanctuary that I frequent. It was like two miles out into the property. And what did I find when I got out there? A huge raspberry bush. And I sat and I chowed down in the middle of the woods with nobody else but the birds and me. And it just to get back to Grange, sometimes you have to search for those sweet little tidbits in life and, and they might come about unexpected, but it's a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. And when you have found something of value, whether it's the raspberries in the woods or the people that can help you, it's like a well-spent search. You're, you're making me blush, Bob. Stop talking about me like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a difference between Jody and I that I would point out at this point is that he would never walk two miles out into the woods <laughs> to look for raspberries. <laughs> it's not a brother. Valid. <laughs> Extremely valid. <laughs> that would be a true true story there. <laughs> All right. So I see all I have is the word user. I don't. I'm That's sorry, Karen. I'm Karen, thank you, Christine. Um, just quick. Uh, we are talking about leadership as our focus on these meetings. So I want to bring it back to that for a moment and say that one of our rather recent members has become a strong, strong leader in that. She belongs to other organizations and she's become an amazing leader in recruiting other new members. It's just been wonderful. Thank you. Good. That's great. Does anybody have anything they would like to ask the the vice president of the National Grange? I want to thank you, Chris, for uh, coming and joining us in our program, and I can't wait to see you guys again at uh, national session. Absolutely, I'm I'm thrilled with the invite. I I really need like three hours. Like so, next time, try to. Try to build me into something more than an hour here. It's that's hard. I, an hour is hard. I I hand it to you to be well, focused focused started. enough to do these to do these well, in an hour. But hopefully, we hit part of the mark or some of the mark or maybe even more than more than that with what you were hoping to get tonight as you go through the, your your schedule for the rest of the the academy and. We'll uh, look, like I said, look forward to seeing how it how it wraps up with you all. All right. Well, Chris, we to you know to piggyback on Bob, we can't thank you enough. Um, you know, the, the information to, tonight was invaluable. Uh, it, it, as long as we get great participation, you know, that's that's really our biggest goal is is to have have topics and discussion where we get the participation and I and 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 I, I think you accomplished that greatly. So um you and, and Dwayne and your mother have a uh, great rest of your your trip back to Washington State. I, I know you're taking a couple of more weeks to get there. So um we should be home by uh by the time for us to have a foundation meeting tomorrow night. So um that ought to be fun. So they always are. No, no, I meant the, the seven hour drive home on a Monday. Well, I don't know which one you were referring to as being more fun, the drive or the meeting. <laughs> I was being polite. So I was referring to the drive this time. Um, so our next module is in uh, two weeks and it is. It is uh, conflict resolution. <sighs> That's with Rusty Hunt, the former National Grange membership Ooh. leadership director. He is a certified conflictor. Um, Resolver. Uh, there's a term for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mediator. That's what's on the degree. Mediator. Yeah. He's a mediator. He, he's a so that ought to be very good. He's a great speaker. And and, and like Chris, he's gonna he's gonna say at the end that he wished he had three hours as well. 
and uh, if if you find him as interesting as I would, you'd you'd listen to him for as I do, you'd listen to him for three hours. So um, with that, we are we are uh, going to go out and find ourselves some dinner because we didn't get into our hotel here on our way home from Michigan until about five thirty. Uh, so and for those of you who know me, I'm I'm getting rather hungry. So you were born hungry and will remain so till the end of your days. If you, if you, Jody, if you find a trail on the side of the road, hike two miles, and you might find some berries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know how skinny I would be if I had to go forage for my? Yeah, own you food? might look like me. We think alike. We could come to resemble each other a little bit more. It wouldn't be that bad. If he goes I, hiking in the woods, I'll take a picture so uh, it goes in the Granger. I, I hunt in shop, so. You know, so, that's the only two yeah. miles to walk is around a grocery store. All right, my friends. Okay. Gonna, Thank I you so much. This was a great session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good evening, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.